Hello, welcome to the Monday, September 16th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. This weekend, Xavi took a look at a RIG exploit kit that delivered a malicious Visual Basic script to one of his users. A couple things that sort of tipped him off here that this was probably malicious. The entire infection started out with a set of redirects to various .xyc domains. .xyc domains are quite popular among malicious websites just because they're cheap to use but on the other hand uh, i haven't really seen a lot of good stuff with .xyc uh, as top level domain so that may be something that you want to take a look at it also appears to use a number of little tricks to make analysis a little bit more difficult short of actually visiting the malicious site like for example checking whether or not you're using the correct browser that you're claiming to use. And then as typical for exploit kits, it uses a number of different uh, vulnerabilities uh, to try to infect the system. Like for example, a flash file, also a PowerShell script is being used. And it also tries to take advantage of the CSE.exe compiler that's part of the .NET framework that's often installed on systems. And actually just uh, happened that uh, Xavier has written about about this particular technique. I believe it was as recently as last week. So probably the easiest way to detect this particular type of attack is looking for these .xyc domains a little bit more closely. IP addresses not all that useful here because the malicious sites, at least part of them, were hosted behind Cloudflare. And whenever I am talking about penetration testing in class, I usually mention the importance of permission and actually having permission that covers the entire scope of the engagement. Now, yes, people talk a lot about possible criminal charges, but often the more common issue here is that you just get fired for, for example, taking down a system that is critical for the business. Well, two penetration testers with security company Coalfire weren't all that lucky. Uh, they were tasked to test the security of documents stored with the Iowa court system. And they felt it necessary. They felt it was part of the scope to do a physical penetration test. So they tried to break into a particular courthouse and were actually caught doing so and now arrested and actually are sitting in jail if bail hasn't posted yet for them. At this point, of course, it's too early to really figure out what exactly happened here and who was at fault but certainly this doesn't look like the pen test was sufficiently prepared and cleared by all affected entities in this case in particular and this is not so unusual it was the state court system that asked them to perform the test but actually the courts they tested were local county courts so uh, very likely that there was a disconnect and that the message wasn't properly transmitted down the chain. Whether you do a physical or a pen test against a computer system, a website or the like, it's always good to first talk to the individual who's in charge of the particular target that you are testing, just to make sure that you're not breaking anything that is critical to the business, that uh, they are aware that you are authorized to conduct the test, and also that whatever entity gave you the permission had the authority to give you the permission to actually conduct the test, which in this example may be in part what the problem was. And of course, this coming week, we are expecting updates from Apple, including the release of iOS 13. Well, uh, this weekend, uh, 
lock screen workaround was released that apparently does work with the latest beta of iOS 13, which is expected to be essentially the operating system to be released later this week. As far as lock screen workarounds are concerned, this isn't the most severe one. It does allow, however, that an attacker is able to browse your contact list. The way it works is, well, relatively straightforward in that if you have enabled reply with text message when you have an incoming call the attacker could then change the to field in the text message to be sent and when they're doing so they will be able to see and scroll through your contact list to pick the recipient of the message the problem was reported to iOS back in June after an earlier beta was released and this vulnerability was detected. Apple apparently hasn't fixed it yet in the latest beta. Also, it kind of refuses to acknowledge this vulnerability with a bug bounty, which probably contributed to the researcher Jose Rodriguez uh, to releasing uh, this particular vulnerability a few days before the final operating system hits download servers. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.